Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So, Britain largely won the vote for the next series, so here we are. Sorry it's taken so long, but we do have a lot of vehicles to cover this time, even for Tier 1. So, if anyone is new, this is a series where we take a look at every single vehicle in the tree, talk about its quirks and how best to play it, and see if a vehicle is worth getting, considering, or avoiding for your lineups. Before we start though, I do have a bit of news. For the time being, I've left G-Squad to help start up another squad and community. It's being made by me and some other very, very experienced players for the purpose of just having chill people to play with and helping people out with the game. The main point of this channel really is to help people get better at and enjoy War Thunder as much as possible, and hopefully this new squad and Discord will help towards that goal. The squad is called Split and links to the Discord are in the description. There you can find out information on the squad itself, ask any questions and just hang out if you like. Also, in the description are the Twitch channels of some of the guys running the squad. They're very good and deserve some support, so give them a follow, and please feel free to ask them as many difficult questions as possible. Anyway, let's get started with the video. As always, I really hope you enjoy. So, first off for the UK is the Reserve A13 Mark I, and for a reserve tank, it isn't really too bad. The armor is non-existent of course, but that's the only real drawback. It's pretty mobile, accelerates great, and can comfortably sit in the 40s on most terrain. The downside with this mobility though is that the tank feels sticky, I can't really think of a better way to put it, in that when turning, the tank will turn just a little bit more than it should. I don't know if this is based in history or otherwise, but it does take some getting used to. The gun though is pretty great, most tanks at the tier use the same one, the 40mm 2 pounder, and with an expert crew you can pump out a round every 3 seconds or so, which is really good. On top of this you do have some pretty good ammo options as well. The main three are the armor piercing capped ballistic cap shell, the armor piercing high explosive shell, and the armor piercing high velocity shell which carries more penetration over range. Because all but two of the tanks at this tier, not including the AA, use the two-pounder, I'll dedicate a section here to talking about the gun itself. So, the AP, despite not having an explosive cone of damage, still easily knocks out tanks, and it's much more reliable than the APHE, though a good APHE shot will likely one-shot a lot of tanks, especially Russian ones. Basically, there's no right or wrong answer about which one of these rounds is the best, it's mainly just down to your preference and what you're most used to. They both work well. I'd probably say that AP rounds are what you should be maining though, if only for the reason that it's consistent for the rest of the tree. Apart from the 2 pounder, there's only two other tanks currently in the tree that use APHE rounds. Everything else is solid shot with no filler. So unless you really like the APHE round, I'd mainly main the ballistic capped shell and take some of the high velocity shells as backup to switch to if you're engaging a tank over about 500 meters away. You might find the APHE works better for you as it is more forgiving, but try them both out and see what you think. Or if you like, maybe even just take a mix of all three. But over 500 meters, the high velocity round definitely is the best. Back to the A13 specifically though. Playstyle wise, you have a fair bit to take advantage of, mostly the speed. You're faster than the vast majority of tanks you'll face, so using that great acceleration and average speed to get a good early game location to prey on the slower enemy tanks will do you well. Try and find an area you know is popular and milk it early game. You fire very, very fast and can pen pretty much everything easily. If the area gets too hot or stale, back off and try and find a ridgeline. You do get unlockable smoke grenades, so if you do need to retreat, you have a one-use pop of them to mask your escape. Your reactionary mobility and reverse gear isn't great, so try and avoid tank dogfights in general. You're better off zipping around and sniping as you can't really take many hits. An additional bonus as well is that you do have a short shoulder stabiliser, so your gun will stabilise quicker when coming to a stop. Keep this in mind as it can be really useful for getting snapshots off earlier than your opponents, as most guns at this tier are quite unstable. So pros, good mobility, good firepower, and versatile. And the cons, poor armour, and poor reactionary mobility. No need for a verdict on this one as it's reserve. When you first start out, this is the tank I would play first though. It's very capable and works in pretty much all environments. Also, a lot of the vehicles in tier 1 play very similarly to this one, so getting the hang of how it works will do you very well. Additionally, one such vehicle is coming up next. Next up is the A13 Mark II. 
very, very similar to the previous vehicle, it is almost identical. This variant just has additional armour on the sides of the turret and an extra 14mm and roughly double the frontal hull armour at a maximum of 30mm. It doesn't really change much though. It's obviously objectively better and a nice change, but everything can still pretty much pen you without much trouble. You will bounce some shots if your turret's angled or on one of the blocks on the front plate, but it just isn't really enough to be relied on and because of that, the playstyle I'd recommend is exactly the same as the previous vehicle. It can do everything the Mark 1 can, just a little bit better. Despite the extra armour, it still reaches identical speeds, so there's no drawbacks for it really. Whether that'll change in the future though, I don't really know, as I guess it should be a little bit slower. Pros and cons are exactly the same, and as for the verdict, I'd say get this one. You're going to need decent backups, and this certainly is a useful option. Plus it is sort of required to get anyway. Next up is our second reserve tier tank, the Tetrarch Mark 1. And, spoiler alert, it's probably the least effective tank for Tier 1, despite how cute it is. Its armour is similar to the A13, but the real killer is the turret traverse. It's 4.9 degrees a second stock, which really is terrible, and less than half the speed of the A13. Mobility-wise, it's close to identical to the A13 off-road. It's a bit quicker on roads, but this doesn't really count for too much. It also suffers from the same sticky driving as well. The situation you want to avoid most in this tank is close quarters combat. Like the A13, its static mobility is poor. This coupled with the terrible turret traverse makes for some pretty frustrating encounters at close range. You're better off equipping the AP and sniping. Cover a large sight line, one that doesn't really require much movement to cover completely, and just focus your attention there. You still have a quick reload, so utilising this and sniping is what I'd aim to do. And, like the A13, if you are in trouble, you do have the smoke grenades to make use of. So, pros. Good firepower. And the cons. Poor armour. Poor versatility. And terrible turret traverse. Again, can't really go with a verdict here as it is reserve, but I'd always use it as secondary to the A13 as it just isn't as capable in pretty much every respect and I'd replace it in your lineup as soon as possible. Despite it being reserve, it just isn't very beginner friendly. Next up is the Daimler Armoured Car Mark II. Now, this might on the surface seem very similar to the Tetrarch, but it's better in pretty much every way. First of all, this one actually has a turret drive. It's the same speed as the A13. Also, being a wheeled vehicle, its speed is a little slower off-road, but on roads and paved ground, it really starts picking up speed. Also, unlike pretty much all British tanks, this one actually gets a reverse gear, and also doesn't suffer from any sticky driving, so overall its mobility is very, very good. And like all the previous tanks, it gets the same shoulder stabiliser as well. Playstyle-wise, it's similar to the A13. Your speed is good, and you can use it very effectively, but like the A13, your static mobility this time is great. You can reverse and accelerate pretty quick, and in some instances, quite literally, run circles around other tanks. But like the A13, I'd rush to a good spot early game and chew up the slower tanks heading to the cap points, and when they dry up, just react to how the match is going. If the team is losing, fall back a bit. If it's going in your favour, you can afford to be fairly aggressive and push. Your armour is paper thin of course, but with the mobility you have, you can easily dip in and out of cover, and the shoulder stabiliser really helps in getting that first shot off as well. So, pros, great mobility, good firepower, and versatile. And the cons, pretty poor armour. Verdict, for this one, get it. It's really nice to play when you unlock all the mobility upgrades, and it's probably the most versatile of all the tanks so far. And honestly, it's really just been a joy to revisit this one. Next up is our first and only medium tank this tier, the Valentine Mark I. And for what it is, as a medium tank, it is very heavily armoured. The front and sides are both 60mm thick, with the turret being 65mm on the front, but given how many angles are present, the effective thickness is increased much further. Mobility, though, is as bad as you might expect. It sits at around 20 kph most of the time with a tiny 2 km per hour reverse gear. So, at 2.3, it seems a little bit like a mobile bunker, right? Well, it's a very temperamental tank. It either works very, very well, or not at all. And annoyingly for it, it just so happens that the tanks that pose most for threats to the Valentine are some of the most common, and that's the early Panzer IVs with the heat round and 20mm autocannons. 
The reason why these are so dangerous is because the Valentine has a very weak, comparatively large turret ring, only 10mm thick. A 20mm round can easily slip through, and considering how close the crew are together, you're likely not going to survive if you get hit there. Annoyingly as well, there's no way to angle the tank in such a way where it's immune to the 100mm heat round the Panzer IVs use. Low tier is often populated by more experienced players these days, so you're likely going to run into at least a few enemies that know about the weak spots of this tank, and that does make it, sadly, quite tedious to use. On the other hand, you can definitely have some fantastic matches with it, especially if the majority of the enemy you're facing are playing Russia, as they really do struggle to pen you. For your playstyle, you do have a couple of tricks up your sleeve that you can employ. First of all, because your side armour is so thick, you can easily angle way more than you usually would, and this will usually trick enemies into shooting your side when they likely won't pen, as most players are so used to shooting side armour. This wasted shot will give you plenty of time to fire back on them, as you still have the very quick reload and the shoulder stabiliser to take advantage of. As long as you don't run into any Panzer IVs, the Valentine works great at close range as long as you really angle. Additionally, to counter your terrible reverse gear, you have roof-mounted smoke grenades, so if you need to escape, you can pop one and just turn around and drive off. You can also be decently effective at long range as well, if you're hull down. Your turret is very thick, so at a decent range, most rounds at the tier will really struggle to take you out, while your high-velocity armor-piercing rounds will still be able to do some damage. However, when you're max up-tiered to 3.3, the Valentine will really start to struggle. You'll start meeting the up-armoured Panzer III's, the F2, and the early T-34's, etc. You can still fight these tanks, but the Valentine comparatively is very outmatched against them. It's a tricky vehicle, it either works great or not at all. So, pros, good armour, and good firepower. And the cons, big weak spots, and poor mobility. Verdict, consider it. I know a lot of people have pretty fond memories of this tank, but it just isn't suited for most maps and becomes redundant very quickly as you go higher up in BR. I'd only spend the time spading this one if you want to spend a fair bit of time in the lower tiers and enjoy slower, methodical, but powerful tanks. Just be prepared for games where your armour melts immediately, as you can't guarantee you're not going to see Panzer IVs. Next up, we're going to get into a couple of pretty capable tanks. This is the Crusader Mark II, and it's a good one. It's equipped with the two-pounder, of course, with a very nice 25 degrees per second traverse, and it's pretty well armoured for what it is too. It has some spaced armour with the machine gun port, the mantlet too is also pretty bouncy, and additionally, it has some pretty effective side armour. It's hard to see, but it's actually double stacked. It's two sets of 14mm, with the extra steel guards, tracks and wheels, and around hitting the angled side will likely hit a wheel or the tracks, and all these little interfering parts really mess with APHE fuses and heat fuses, which make up for most of the rounds that you're going to be taking, so looking pretty good. It's a tiny bit slower than the A13s, but its acceleration and mobility are still pretty good. It gets the shoulder stabiliser, and also, if you use the manual gear control and put it in gear 1, its speed will max out at 9km per hour, which is the max speed the stabiliser works at. So, if you cruise around with this on, boom, you have a perfectly working stabiliser. I wouldn't really recommend playing it like this though, as it can be a little bit uneventful. Speaking of playstyle though, you do have some options. First off, I'd look at the BR you're playing it at, as since it's a 2.3 tank, you can, like the Valentine, start seeing some tanks that'll give you some trouble. If this is the case, you're going to want to play fairly flanky. The 2-pounder is good, but not quite good enough to frontally tackle the 3.3 mediums you can fight. You're definitely going to need to get on their side to kill them reliably. Of course, there's no guarantee you'll be meeting tanks like this, but it's a good safe rule of thumb to play by. If you do come across tanks like the F2 and the late Panzer III, T-34, etc., Try and disable the breach first. You fire so quick that you can afford to take them out a little slower while playing it safe. A good shot into the turret should take it out, and then you can dissect the crew at your leisure. It's a very psychotic sentence reading that back, actually. Anyway, another thing to keep in mind is to angle your armour a fair bit. Heat rounds will easily get stopped by your side armour, so try and entice enemies to shoot at it. Also, make sure you always angle with the MG port towards the enemy. If they hit it, all they're really going to do is kill the machine gunner, and as you have five crew members, you can afford to lose him. If you're playing at a lower BR, you can basically play however you like. You have a lot of fallbacks, including roof-mounted smoke grenades, to get yourself out of trouble. 
so just let your inherent playstyle take over and you'll get some good results, I'm sure. So, pros, good mobility, good survivability, and decent firepower. And the cons, well, the only thing I can really put here is that its BR can sometimes put it into games where it suffers a bit. Verdict, of course, get it. It's really where the tree starts kicking off and you'll have a lot of fun with this tank. You'll completely mop up in 2.3 games when you get the hang of it, and if you like the sound of this tank, I've got some very good news for you next. Right, so, next up is the Crusader Mark III, which is probably one of my all-time favourite tanks. It does lose two crew members and the MG port, but what it does have is probably my favourite gun tier for tier in the entire game the 57mm 6-pounder. With an expert crew, you can shoot off a round every 4.2 seconds. On top of this, it has amazing spalling characteristics and a maximum pen of 121mm with the upgraded shot. Safe to say, no tanks are really going to give you much trouble. Also, on the surface, the turret looks like it's lacking armour compared to the previous Crusader, but if you look just right, you can see an extra plate behind the main one, rounding up the face armour to 50mm. So, not too bad. Of course though, in losing two crew, its survivability definitely does take a hit, but it is worth it for the gun that you get. The only tank that's really going to give you much trouble potentially is the KV-1 at a max up tier, but with some well-placed shots you can easily take it out. Most of the time though, you'll be seeing much weaker vehicles that you can dispatch in a single shot, and like the Mark II, you have exactly the same stabilizer characteristics. Because this vehicle is so good and capable, it'd be kind of patronizing of me to tell you how to play it, the only advice I can really give to you this time is angle towards the driver's port. It's connected to the fighting compartment, so a round that passes through will likely one-shot you, but there are some extra bits of armour present on it, adding an extra 50mm. They don't reliably stop incoming rounds, but it's the best you've got if you get into trouble. Also remember to angle your armour too, trust me, the side armour, again, works amazing if it's angled right. Also, make sure you use your smoke grenades, considering you have 50 of them for some reason. Don't know how they fit them on the turret, but not complaining. So, if you need to smoke off a retreat or sightline, pop one and turn tail. They fall and explode very quick, so if you need to escape quick, they'll really help you out. So, pros, good mobility, great firepower, and versatile. And the cons, well, considering it only has three crew, its survivability isn't great. Verdict, of course, a bit pointless this bit, isn't it? Get it, it's an amazing tank. Even if light tanks aren't your thing, please give this one a go. It's well equipped for every situation and you'll have tons of fun using it. Actually, it might even make the tank a little bit better if it was up tier to 3.0 and moved to tier 2 where it could receive scouting. This tank works well beyond its BR, so I think this would actually be a pretty good place for it. Let's see. Either way, it's a great vehicle and definitely the star of tier 1. Next up is our AA, and sadly we start with a pretty poor example. This is the creatively named Mark VI AAA. It has two crew and is equipped with four rifle caliber machine guns. The ammo options it gets are pretty bad, it's just a combination of AP and tracer rounds. You need to be really close to a plane to deal any considerable damage. Also, the rounds have a prominent trail on them which makes aiming even harder. There's not really much I can say regarding playstyle, as you can't really damage any tanks reliably. You can hassle some of the armoured cars, but it's not really worth doing. The max penetration you have is only 13mm at close range, so for most tanks the best you can do is to shoot out their lead drive wheel to disable the track. So for the most part you're strictly an anti-air vehicle, so just stay in cover and, well, try your best. So, pros? Nah. Nah. Cons, poor anti-air ability, and poor anti-tank ability. Verdict, well, even though it's going to be your first anti-air, I think you're better off avoiding this one, it's just tedious to use. The best anti-air vehicles are effective against tanks and planes. This is effective against neither. Even though it's required to research our next AA, it's still not really worth wasting your time with. Next up, we have a much better example. This is the T-17E2, and for what it is, it is pretty good. This is an armoured car equipped with two 50 cals, it's very mobile, and the guns this time are pretty good, especially against lightly armoured vehicles and, to be honest, most of the low-tier Russian tanks. So you do have more options this time. It's not really reliable to do this, as you will undoubtedly come across tanks that you can't damage anywhere, but it is definitely a more versatile anti-air vehicle. 
For playstyle, the first thing we should really get into is which belts to use. And actually for this one, the default or common belt is actually the most versatile. You have an AP round and APIT round, so you have aircraft and armor covered in one belt. Other belts are better against planes and tanks respectively, but just to cover all bases, I'd stick with the default one. Additionally, your turret is actually decently well armoured, it's just over 30mm thick, so no MGs can really get you from the sides, though at the front there's a gap, so if you come across a tank trying to spray your gunner through the gap in the middle, just make sure to angle your turret a little bit away from the line of fire. So, pros, good mobility, and versatile. And for the cons, well, it just really isn't very survivable. Verdict. Of course, get this one. For the low tiers, it'll do just fine as an AA. It's not super tricky to aim, and it'll shred most of the low tier planes we'll come across, as, let's be honest, most of them are going to be biplanes. And it's also pretty fun to zip around the map and hassle the lightly armoured tanks you might run into, so it's definitely a fun one. So, next up are our premiums, and we start off with a painfully easy one to cover. This is the A13 Mark I. 3rd Royal Tank Regiment, and it's completely identical to the one in the regular tech tree. The only difference really is it comes with some free decals and a different camo. And it's also the premium that you get for free if you choose British Ground Forces as your starter nation. The reward multiplier it gets isn't great, but for 250 Golden Eagles you get a decent low tier backup. However, what I'd actually suggest is playing the A13, and if you like it, pop a talisman on it as it's only about a third as expensive at only 80 Golden Eagles. You do lose the Silver Lion multiplier bonus, but there are plenty of better premiums to pick up down the line that have much more longevity as vehicles as this one gets outdated pretty quick. So is it worth it? Well, I'd say it probably is. It's very cheap and gives you a nice little boost towards Tier 1 and Tier 2 vehicles. It isn't a necessity to pick up, but it still wouldn't be a mistake to do so. Next up is again another painfully similar premium. This is the A13 Mark II Mod 1939. This is identical to the regular Mark II, apart from the fact that this modification adds a single plate of armour on the front of the turret, doubling its thickness to 28mm. Because of this extra 14mm armoured plate, it for some reason has a higher BR at 1.7, and because of this, it's likely going to get up-tiered a lot more often, despite having the potential of a 1.3 realistically. Gaijin likely haven't down-tiered it because, well, no one really plays it, as this was a hidden vehicle for a very long time, being one of Britain's initial pre-order premium vehicles. Its playstyle and pros and cons are pretty much exactly the same as the other A13s, as this modification doesn't really change anything considerable. So, is it worth it? Well, firstly, to pick it up, you'll need access to the Gaijin Marketplace where it's currently being sold. Currently, it costs 5 Gaijin coins, but the price will likely keep rising over time as the supply dries up. But even for that price, I'm not really sure it is worth it, as it does get outdated pretty quick. And as a Tier 1, it doesn't get access to scouting abilities. If it did, I'd probably suggest getting it, as the UK doesn't really have many tanks with scouting readily available. So, I'm gonna say it's not worth it. Save your money until we get further down the tree and pick up some premiums or talismans there. Lastly, we have our low tier heavy tank premium, the A1E1 Independent, and sadly, it's not very effective when compared to the T35, etc. So the armour is very poor, the critical crew members are all packed tightly together, and the gun is far from perfect. It doesn't really have anything going for it, apart from it being a bit of a battlefield spectacle. The gun does fire an APHE round, but its max pen is only 49mm at close range, and its velocity is very poor, making it quite tedious to use. The main benefit of tanks like this is that they're survivable. They have a lot of crew, so they're forgiving, in a sense. But shooting the flat block of armour on the front with pretty much any APHE round will take out the driver and the main turret crew. And as the low tier guns fire very fast, chipping away at the other crew members won't be too hard. Unless you hit ammo, it is nearly impossible to one shot, but that doesn't really count for much. On the plus side though, it is pretty quick. It accelerates well and you can comfortably reach 30 km an hour on most terrain. Additionally, it is equipped with the short shoulder stabiliser, so at speeds of 9 km an hour or less, the gun will be completely stabilised. And like the Crusaders, if you manually set the tank to gear 1, it will cruise at exactly 9km an hour. So, as long as you don't mind driving slow, you can pretty consistently get the first shot off, as most other guns around this tier don't handle very well and will bounce when the tank comes to a stop, so you can get some reliable kills this way. For playstyle, this tank works oddly enough on shock value, as strange as it sounds. 
new players likely never really come across it, so they don't really know where they want to shoot it, and playing on this mindset while using the stabilization is how you'll do best with this tank. Actually, to put it into perspective of how little this tank is played, on Thunder Skill it's only been played 8 times this month, and those 8 games are all by me getting footage for it, so a lot of players are not going to be used to seeing this thing at all. Anyway, so what I'd suggest is put yourself around populated areas but try and avoid spots where you can be flanked. Your static mobility and turret traverse is very very slow, so if an enemy gets behind you there's nothing at all you can really do. Another thing is angling. Always angle with one of the little machine gun turrets pointed at the enemy. If they're a newer player they might just shoot right at it. And don't be afraid to show more side armour. In angling more than you normally would, some rounds might get caught in the extra side armour or the tracks or wheels. I found this way of angling to at least be the most consistent. It doesn't always work, but it's the best chance you've got really. So, pros, effective stabilization, and I guess it's technically survivable? And as for the cons, poor firepower, poor armor, and low versatility. So is it worth it? No prizes for guessing really, it definitely isn't worth it, especially with a hefty price tag of 2,100 golden eagles. This is mainly just a tank for collectors really, it's not effective at all for grinding. I'd completely avoid this one. Even if you are a collector, there are more enjoyable, better tanks out there to play around with. Right, so that's all the tanks for today. But before we look at the final lineups, I'll briefly go over the planes you could take. And Britain actually has a lot of them at these early tiers, so... First off, we have the Swordfish. Notoriously slow and weak, but it does get two drops of 250 pound bombs, which is pretty good for 1.0. If you plan on sticking at 1.0 for a while, you might as well pick it up. However, it does take a very long time to fly back to base and rearm, which can be really tedious. Next is the premium Wiraway, and at 480 golden eagles, it's actually really good. You can outturn most monoplane aircraft pretty easily and can carry two 250 pound bombs and two 500 pound bombs, which gives you two really good drops. It's definitely a premium I'd recommend, but it's not really necessary. If you do have the GE to spare though, it wouldn't be a waste. Next up is the Hampton TB Mark I. Granted, it's big and slow, but its bomb load really stands out. You can carry four 1,000 pound bombs and two 500 pound bombs, and the best part is that you can drop the 1,000s individually. It has loads of potential, but only really if there's no anti-air up. It's a kind of high risk, high reward kind of aircraft, given the spawn point cost, but if you like big bomb loads, check it out. Next up is a bit of a twofer, the Beaufort and Blenheim. They both have the same bomb load and perform basically the same. You get two 500 pound bombs or four 250 pound bombs and they all drop individually. Not the biggest load, but they're quick, comparatively well defended, and fly fairly nimbly. They're a good middle ground between light and heavy aircraft and will do just fine if you choose them. Next up though is my personal favourite pick, the Hurricane Mark II and the Mark IV. The Mark II can carry 6 RP3s and comes with 12 rifle caliber machine guns, and the Mark IV can carry 8 RP3s or two 40mm cannons. It's up to you which one you like the sound of more, I personally go with the Mark II as the RP3s are incredible and will one-shot basically anything you hit at the tier, and the guns really help mop up any aircraft in the area and shred open top tanks. I'd recommend these are the planes that you go for the most. Whew. Lot to cover today, but that largely is it for tier 1. On the screen now are two of the best lineups I have come up with, as there's not really many you can make for tier 1. I haven't put the Crusader Mark III in one yet, as there are other vehicles coming up that make lineups it fits better into. But for now, here's what I think are the best. Thank you very much for watching everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this new series, and I hope uh, this is going to be a good one. I know a lot of people, especially new players, tend to struggle with Britain, so let's see. Hopefully, if you are a new player, uh, this is going to help you out. Also, please feel free to um, come and join this new Discord and squad below. It's in its early days, but hopefully it's going to grow into a nice little community for everyone. Of course, we'll still be active with the G-Squad guys and on my own Discord, so nothing major is going to change. Uh, but yeah, Tier 2 will be coming up next, and I will see you all there. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.